thanks for joining me once again here on Classic Dirt Bike TV as we uh, continue our uh, coverage of the 2023 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And a big thanks to all of my subscribers out there who have been uh, leaving some uh, very nice comments with regards uh, parts uh, 1 to 7, which we've already seen here on my channel. So uh, thanks to everybody out there for your continuing uh, support. Of my channel. Now this uh, next uh, video posting will be the penultimate uh, video from uh, this year's 2023 Telford show so I hope you enjoy uh, this next video and of course the final part which will be uh, posted in the next uh, few weeks. So without any further delay let's jump straight in to uh, the Telford show and take a look at our uh, next machine. Although just before we get down to the main event, I just uh, wanted to show you just how tightly packed together uh, some of the bikes were in the main hall at Telford, which, uh, as I said, was a bit of a shame, really, because uh, there were some uh, really nice rare bikes in this section over the two days uh, of the show with a quite nice looking uh, Suzuki there and, of course, that big XR500 Honda. But uh, these are a couple of the bikes that I'd love to have got a closer look at. Uh, that big Michael on the left there was supposedly an X1968 uh, factory 360 uh, machine, while uh, this uh, other bike with that lovely uh, blue tank uh, was said to be a stock original 360, also from 1968. And whoever did all of the restoration on these two crackers has made a fantastic job, that's for sure. But there certainly were some very nice rear and uh, top quality bikes in this particular section. Uh, and although uh, you could catch a glimpse of many of them from the sides, uh, you just couldn't get close enough to examine uh, all of the bike's details and some of their intricate parts. But uh, again, another pair of quality classics from uh, back in the day. But once again, uh, this was another interesting classic. It's an Italian uh, TGM 250 from probably around uh, 1979 or 1980. And uh, this once more was a, another of the many bikes that were being offered up for sale over the weekend. And if you had a spare, five and a half thousand pounds just hanging around doing nothing then you could certainly have bought this little Italian stallion and it took it home. Now as you're aware these TGMs were powered by an Italian manufactured Hyro 250 two-stroke motor and these Hyro motors were supplied and used by many European bike manufacturers all across Europe during the 1970s and early 80s and even the great uh, Bolton based CCM factory in the UK uh, used uh, 125 and 250 variations of this motor on some of their uh, 1979 and 1980 uh, CCM bikes. Now TGM uh, was of course an abbreviation of uh, Terzi Giovanni Marchesini, who uh, were the initial founders of the TGM uh, company who started back in the early 1970s by using small 50cc Saks engines before then moving on to these bigger Hyro power plants and it's said that in 1983 uh, TGM then formed a relationship with Kajiva until they then closed in 1985. But again, as per many of the other bikes that were at the show, I don't have any uh, details on this particular bike and I'm not sure that it's actually even 100% original either, but uh, having said that, uh, it would still make quite a nice 250 twin shock uh, racer and it certainly would be a novelty to see one of these Italian TGMs uh, racing once again on a track here in the UK because only a handful were ever shipped over to Britain in the late uh, 70s and 80s as uh, most of their sales 
were confined to Italy itself and, of course, a few of their bordering uh, countries. But TGM were very typical of the many small Italian manufacturers that were springing up to supply motorcycles to the off-road community uh, when the sport of motocross, or scrambling as it was known then, it was becoming hugely popular. Although once uh, the big four Japanese companies of Suzuki, Yamaha, Kawasaki and Honda began uh, flooding the market with cheaper and better bikes, uh, little uh, European concerns like TGM just couldn't compete on uh, volume of bikes or even price and quality. And so the next bike that we're going to take a look at is this uh, immaculate 1979 KTM GS uh, 125 Enduro bike. And uh, this is another uh, for sale bike that's undergone a full nut and bolt uh, restoration. Now it has to be said that uh, over the course of the Telford weekend, I did come across uh, lots of machines that had a for sale sticker uh, stamped on them and some uh, were uh, selling for pretty fair prices in my opinion although uh, others were just uh, simply outrageous uh, the price that the sellers were asking and uh, taking out a remortgage on your house to try and get the money together to buy an old twin shot race bike was certainly not a viable option. Although our featured uh, KTM here was uh, certainly not in that category of expensive bikes and uh, actually I just can't understand why this little beauty never got snapped up because it was advertised at just 4,255 of our finest uh, British pounds which uh, I thought was a great bargain considering the money and the time spent on the bike's parts and restoration. Now I was also told on the day that every single part on this bike has either been fully refurbished or replaced with new old stock KTM parts and uh, this 125 motor has uh, also been fully rebuilt and has a new cylinder liner, uh, a new piston and a connecting rod as well. Now the seller also told me that uh, a lot of the parts used in this motor's construction came straight from Andrew Horvath at Enduro Classiker, the KTM specialist in Austria. So the bike has certainly got all of the correct parts on it for a 1979 Enduro 125. Now you can also see that uh, this motor even has its original uh, Bing carburetor uh, bolted onto the rear of that cylinder. But I'm not exactly sure what these smaller 125 KTM engines were like uh, from 1979 and it's not uh, a model that I'm uh, familiar with but uh, usually these KTM engines were well engineered and quite reliable and I expect that uh, the smaller 125 motor will be ideally suited as an enduro or vintage uh, scrambles machine if you maybe wanted to have a bit of fun on a bike at the weekend. But up at the bike's front end, it was a pair of Italian Marzocchi triple clamps or yokes that were bolted on to these Austrian 125s. And naturally, it also had a pair of Marzocchi forks as well, as I'm sure you'll have already heard me mention about these Marzocchi forks being fitted onto many different kinds of bikes during the 1970s and uh, 1980s. So again, it's no surprise to see that KTM also uh, made use of these forks on these enduro bikes. But once more, old school uh, drum brakes were the standard stoppers uh, for uh, 1979. And you can certainly see that there's been a lot of work has gone into the refurbishment of this uh, little uh, 125 and it's certainly uh, been tastefully restored that's for sure and it even has uh, a power dynamo and 12 volt electrics to feed that uh, front and rear uh, lighting kit. 
And so at the back end of our KTM Enduro bike, it's uh, another pair of Italian Marzocchi uh, rear shocks, which uh, once more are the original items from that year that uh, have undergone a full rebuild before then being uh, refitted back onto the bike. But the uh, rear sprocket and uh, drive chain are obviously uh, new replacement items because, uh, let's face it, uh, you're not going to refit 44-year-old uh, chain and sprockets to a brand new restored bike, especially if, of course, you intend to race it. But uh, as per the front of the bike, another old-school uh, drum stopper here at the rear, which uh, again, supposedly it uh, worked very well because our 79125 uh, wasn't exactly a heavy uh, machine. Now I'm guessing here once again that these KTM fuel tanks from that year were either steel or alloy because I just uh, don't know uh, for sure, but uh, I still think that it was around the early 80s and maybe even 81 or 82 when KTM then switched from steel or alloy to the much more popular uh, plastic items that we see uh, nowadays. But uh, as I already mentioned, a 12 volt electric kit with our little Enduro, uh, which uh, would be very helpful if you wanted to put this bike uh, back on the road, which is actually another piece of the information that I got from the owner on the day that the, the bike is currently not registered for highway use, although uh, the owner does have a Nova certificate for the bike so that it can in fact be registered for road use if uh, required. But I don't think that these handlebars are the original 1979 parts, but uh, I expect that they've just been uh, swapped uh, due to the rider's uh, own personal uh, preferences. Although for me, personally speaking, this uh, little 1979 GS125 KTM was uh, certainly one of the more genuine buys of the weekend because uh, there's certainly been a ton of work and money spent on this bike and as I said, it's been put back to almost its original condition. And with that price tag of just £4,255, it has to be a bargain whether you'd like to add it to your collection or maybe use it at a classic or vintage enduro or scrambles event. So who knows if you're maybe in the market for a good quality twin shock dirt bike, then this it might be worth uh, giving Terry a bell on this number and uh, who knows, uh, with a little bit of negotiation, you might even end up picking up the bargain of Telford for 2023. And so just to finish off this part 8 episode from Telford 2023, we're going to take a look at Chris Chell's 1971-600 Shenny uh, BSA, a bike that's already taken Chris to a British uh, Classic Championship win uh, four times. So uh, not only does this bike uh, look the dog's bollocks, it also has a proven record on the racetrack as well. Now I've certainly seen this bike in action on the track quite a few times and uh, with a bit of searching on my YouTube channel, I'm sure that you'll be able to find some racing footage of Chris on this bike at uh, some of those big uh, race events like the Blaine Carden or uh, Westmoreland uh, Motor Club uh, Scrambles events. But uh, it still suffice to say that this bike is uh, very quick out there on the racetrack. But it is good just to see the bike out and about again because back in 2015 Chris did have quite a serious accident and unfortunately it broke his back during a big race event and it was at least a couple of years before Chris got back to any reasonable state of fitness and thankfully now in 2023 he's back to his old self again and already looking forward 
to starting the new British classic uh, motocross uh, championship, which uh, I think gets underway in mid Wales on the 14th of May. And so let's uh, start off by taking a look at the bike's uh, chassis, which is an original uh, Eric Shaney frame from 19. 71. Now, Eric Shaney was uh, yet another one of the legendary British uh, old-school frame builders who, it said, uh, used to chalk out his frame designs on the wall of his workshop, and uh, if he didn't like the look of what he'd just sketched, then uh, Eric would just simply rub it out and then uh, start again. But without question, uh, Eric's frame designs are uh, legendary and that's uh, why uh, some of the top British riders like Chris Chell use them in their uh, racing motorcycles. So the engine in Chris's bike uh, naturally is a BSA power plant that uh, uses a pair of BSA B25 crankcases and a big uh, BSA B50 its cylinder head and the motor is uh, currently set up to run on uh, regular gas and not uh, methanol and he, he told me that the compression ratio in this cylinder is about uh, 9 uh, to 1. Now although it may be a, a little bit hard to see it in this shot here tucked up in behind that big BSE cylinder is a 34 millimeter Italian Delorto carburetor which uh, has the job of pumping that fuel into this big uh, thumper motor. Now some of the other features on the BSA's transmission side is that it's fitted with an NEB clutch and has a three speed uh, gearbox as well and just at the bottom of your picture there you can see that uh, Chris is also bolted on a decent pair of wide foot pegs as well to give his feet a little bit more support when he's uh, standing up on the pegs. And once more it looks like uh, Chris has had a custom made exhaust for his Shenny racer as it appears to have uh, this uh, little join here where the pipe exits the cylinder head and normally uh, these pipes are just a big bore straight through exhaust with uh, no tailpipe at the rear although uh, as you can see a nice uh, megaphone type uh, rear pipe has been added uh, probably just to satisfy uh, those uh, noise pollution uh, activists but certainly make uh, no mistake this 600 cc bsa uh, power plant certainly isn't short in the horsepower department which uh, as I said is already taking Chris to four British championship titles already and uh, although these old uh, BSE engines are probably now clocking on to more than 60 odd years old there's still a match for anything uh, they come up against in the pre-1968 or even pre-1970 class and that's just one reason that the great uh, Alan Clues also used these motors or derivatives of them uh, to power his highly successful uh, CCM bikes in the 1970s. Although there's certainly uh, no mistaking the shape of this Shenny fuel tank which uh, I'm pretty sure is uh, made from alloy and as you can see very tastily painted in this kind of uh, metallic uh, blue colour. But also with uh, Shaney's quick release uh, screws on the front there to hold the fuel tank onto the chassis and we also have that Monza style fuel cap there on uh, the top. But uh, certainly uh, not the most uh, plushest of race seats on Chris's Shaney. Uh, which, uh, after all, is uh, a dirt bike and it's not an armchair, of course, but uh, I suppose it all depends on how you actually ride your bike, as uh, some riders do like to spend quite a bit of their time standing uh, on the pegs, but uh, nevertheless, 
uh, this seat here still looks uh, comfy enough to put your backside on between all of those uh, bumps and jumps. And so as we move on to the back of our Shenny BSA, we have uh, a nice pair of classic Olin's suspension units. Now, uh, these specialised dampers are, of course, uh, custom made for these older types of motorcycles, which uh, still gives the bike its period look. But uh, inside these Olin's uh, rear suspension units are some of the best of suspension technology and uh, these are a world apart from all of those uh, basic dampers that some riders had to put up with uh, back in the 1960s. But once more, uh, top of the range rear suspension as you'd expect on a championship winning machine. So as we move to the back of the bike once again, this uh, rear hub is uh, not as you'd expect a British made item like uh, maybe a BSA or even a Grimeka hub but uh, this part here is actually a rear hub taken from a KTM uh, motocross uh, bike. Now as to why Chris actually chose to fit this KTM part as opposed to maybe something uh, like a, a BSA QD hub uh, I don't actually know but uh, you have to admit it still fits in very well with the rest of the bike. Now, uh, moving on to the front end of Chris's Shenny, which uh, doesn't have your uh, run-of-the-mill uh, Serianis or similar types of forks as you've come to expect on these old scramblers because uh, these front forks and, of course, these triple clamps here are uh, super high quality and all manufactured here in the UK by REH Suspensions. Now, REH, just in case you're interested, uh, was created by uh, Robin Humphreys back in the 1960s and it was later then revived by Duncan MacDonald uh, around 2014. And basically, uh, these very high quality REH forks are uh, made mainly for your old school uh, scrambles and trials bikes and they're all manufactured using state-of-the-art modern materials and uh, although these forks are brand new they're still eligible to race at most uh, UK trials and scrambles events. But some of the specifications of these REH forks are that they're made from uh, 2014A aluminium and uh, these scrambles units are normally 35 millimeter forks and have uh, quite a unique coating on their inner uh, parts called uh, titanium nitride anti-stiction uh, stanchions. Now uh, just try saying that after you've had a few beers but uh, Chris did tell me that uh, he's been using these REH forks for quite some time now and he still considers these uh, suspension units to be among some of the best available for these old classic dirt bikes. So uh, if you want to know a bit more about uh, REH and their off-road uh, competition suspension systems, it's certainly worthwhile uh, having a wee uh, sneaky peek at their website. So as we move on to the cockpit of uh, Chris's uh, flying machine, uh, quite a good quality uh, Venn Hill gasser and their cables here to keep that uh, 600 BSA Motors horses uh, on a leash and uh, once more the bike's handlebars are modern style uh, rental units with uh, a handy engine kill switch there as well on the left uh, just in case of any problems with that BSA motor and it needs to be shut down uh, in a hurry. Although without doubt this is another quality race bike from the 2023 Telford Show and uh, if you're a follower of classic or vintage scrambles in the UK then you're almost certain to come across Chris uh, riding this bike especially if you attend any of the big British classic motocross rounds uh, during their uh, four round championship at venues across 
the UK. And if you're actually in Scotland, you'll be able to see Chris's bike in action uh, when the championship comes to Lockerbie on the 11th of June. Well, I hope you enjoyed that latest selection of machines from the 2023 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show in uh, Part 8. And uh, don't forget, uh, we will be showcasing the last and final episode of uh, this year's show here on my channel uh, very soon. And uh, in that video, we'll be taking a look at uh, this uh, quite old classic, this uh, international six days uh, trial machine. Uh, an old uh, bike from back in the day. We'll also be taking a look at this uh, lovely uh, CR250 Honda Red Rocket that was on display at the uh, Phil Denton engineering stand. And of course, we will have uh, more uh, nice machines and various other snippets of uh, video clips from uh, the 2023 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And that will be all in my final video. So uh, once again, Thanks for watching my video content here on YouTube. So until the next time, it's goodbye for now.